Tatiana Mora is a Square Enix character designer, best known for his work on Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. We all know that he is the man behind the Goku of RPGs, Cloud. But what about his art style? While well, we can't deny that his belts, chains and weird stuff makes him exceptional. His style can definitely be seen in his facial features, the dynamic hair and his character proportions. In my eyes, however, his main talent is by far in his storytelling with none other than his character designs. When we analyze and break down Tetsuya Moore's art style on each and every aspect, there's one thing that always returns, and that is the catch light in the eyes. Despite Nomura undergoing various stylistic changes over the years, these sketch lights remain his signature trope, situated to the side of the iris, just above the center. That said, overall, the eyes are drawn with gentle strokes, using soft curves, medium-sized irises and pupils. When we focus on the details, Nomura prefers emphasizing both the upper and lower eyelid creases. Additionally, he tends to depict short eyelashes for both genders. Depending on game project, he sporadically adds tear ducts and relatively short eyebrows. For the nose, Nomura typically renders them quite large and straightforward, with soft curved indents depending on the characters. When examining the mouth, it becomes evident that Nomura favors emphasizing the lips especially adding volume for female characters. Moreover, he incorporates somewhat zigzag arcs into his expression. Nomura tends to draw the chin and cheeks curved and soft, making most of his characters appear quite gentle. And it goes without saying that all these subtle facial features depends on the specific art style direction of the projects he worked on. So to elaborate a bit for the ones who are less familiar with Nomura, in his 30 year video game art career, he changed from the early 90s anime and manga style, as seen in Final Fantasy, to a more realistic style entering the millennium. Soon after, he worked on Kingdom Hearts in collaboration with Disney, implanting many of the soft facial features noted earlier. In between the different main series, he of course did side projects and spin off titles as well. In other words, Nomura had the freedom to experiment and push a huge range of styles from typical anime and manga to realism and even chibi. By the way, have you ever noticed that this character proportions contain insane long legs and relatively small torsos? And just as another observation, his throats and limbs are sometimes exaggerated in relation to each other reaching levels that can be a bit freaky. So, when we objectively look at Nomura's overall art style and design choices, we have to address how he draws the hair. And I can't emphasize enough that this hair design and style is what makes his characters memorable. Like I mentioned before, Cloud is the Goku of RPGs because of his iconic spiky hair. It's so exaggerated that he probably hides his buster sword in it. In all seriousness, he is the most recognized Final Fantasy character because of it. Frankly speaking, if you're aiming to master the art of drawing hair, Nomura stands out as one of the finest references. He not only covers all the fundamentals, but he also maintains an accessible style. To break it down, He's excellent at drawing flow, which makes the hair direction easy on the eyes. He skillfully employs asymmetry to maintain variety in his spiky hair chunks, achieving a balanced and appealing volume that adds to the overall visual charm. We can achieve this by adding bangs, hair chunks from the rear, and adding flat and curved sections to disrupt the spiky pattern. Overall, he tends to draw with thick strokes from the base that end in sharp edges. While the hair type varies depending on the art style, as a general trend, he tends to craft them with a curved, soft and yet spiky appearance. For the women, he mainly uses straight hair falling towards the rear. 
The thing that sets Umura apart is his skill in creating depth. He effectively arranges the hair chunks, placing them in stacked, layered manner that enhances the overall visual appeal. This way, the hair always looks dynamic and cool. You can see him using it more over the years. Also, in his Final Fantasy VII Remake cloud design, he went totally nuts with the concept. In my perspective, the most effective way to understand his art style is by examining his sketches and concept art. Here, you'll notice his preference for thick lines, strategically placed shadows, all contributing to a soft, dynamic visual appeal. As for his art tools, Nomura favors the traditional approach, using black ink as mechanical pens to create his initial sketches. He paraphrased Nobuo Matsu's philosophy that it is enough to compose the melody at the minimum without using advanced musical equipment. And to translate it, after scanning in his works, he employs digital coloring. Also, he noted that in the final phases of the illustration, he refines the line art, making it thicker to maintain creative control, and then sent it to the art team to finalize the commercial appeal. And personally, I think it's neat that many Japanese artists still prefer traditional art over digital art. So when we zoom into Tetsuya Nomura's concept art and check out his color style, he experimented with quite an array of palettes, hues and tones. He went for medium color saturation in Final Fantasy VII. For this, he used color pencils to emphasize the form by using soft and hard edges for shadows to create contrast and depth. This happens to be my personal favorite art style in his repertoire. In all fairness, part of that preference stems from nostalgia as a 90s kid. In case for Kingdom Hearts, he went with many different approaches. Vibrant colors reminiscent of Disney's signature style. Soft watercolors that gracefully flow off the paper and an overall preference for low saturated images. And damn, I love these gentle hues, tones and colors. Technically, I can go on for a while, because he did many projects that pushed him to become a versatile artist. That's by the way one of the things pros do to really get a grasp into developing their art. They play around with a range of color combinations that fit their line art. All that said, what about his character designs? First off, in an interview, he said that his favorite characters are Cloud, Sora, Noctis, and Kairi. And his reason? He added that he likes to design in a one shot, so the first design drawn is the base of the final character design. However, these four were tough and took multiple attempts to get right, challenging his talent, so to say. And therefore, he concluded that he was way more invested into them compared to the rest. Okay, we all know he's good, but what makes him extraordinary? For instance, he knows how to make characters in their specific setting, creating great archetypes for each personality. Anyone who looks at his characters has an idea what he or she is about. And again, he is that good that he can blend his characters into other universes like Disney. Therefore, it might come to no surprise that he has been asked as a guest character designer for many projects. In short, he is such a pro that multiple development teams granted him a lot of freedom during the projects. Ok, now for a breakdown why I think that Nomura is one of the best character designers in the industry. We all know that characters have a synergy with each other, each playing their role in the story. However, Nomura is very deliberate on how each character looks compared to another. Zack, Cloud and Sephiroth share many commonalities not only in the story, but visuals as well. Both Cloud and Zack are very similar in age, close and punky hairstyle, but that of Zack falls to his rear and is dark compared to Cloud's forward punky blonde. They are distinct for sure, but anyone can tell that these guys are connected in some way, in this case friendship. Would anyone of these characters fit the same visual cue instead of Zack? I think we all can conclude that Zack was the right choice, uh, that's for sure. And in tropes of story, a great villain should be relatable by being somewhat similar to the main character, yet different. Sephiroth has long, silver-grey hair, which falls straight downwards, with his age slightly older than the boys, 
Also, he loves leather way more than the other two. Sephiroth thinks he's an ancient, and when we put Aerith next to him, we can see the green eyes, long hair and bangs. And if we add Tifa in the mix, we have two girls who are different in outfit and personality. A perfect choice for the player to choose their date with. And now look at Barrett and Red. They are just a freaking awesome combo. To put a more serious tone on it. This Final Fantasy VII Rebirth poster drawn by Nomura. Hey, what the fuck? I sure hope that isn't there. Anyways, this CGI image composed by Tetsu Nomura also shows how excellent the boys their connectivity is. Disclaimer before I get called out. My current analyze is a first impression pre-launch. Zack looks positively at the blue bright skies of the future, while Cloud wants to fix the green Mako poisoning that haunts him from the past. In the meantime, Sephiroth plans to drop a meteor on the world, scorching everything with his fiery red menace. Despite the trio's New Year's resolutions, I think the composition Nomura chose for these three characters is brilliant. When we check Final Fantasy VIII's Squall and Cypher, I think we all can see the contrast between their arc rival character designs. Also, if we look at Sora, Kairi and Riku, these three also have a great connectivity in character design. Different, yet familiar. There is no surprise that when we look at the roster of characters Nomura was mainly responsible for, that you can see so many of the character tropes coming back. Although some characters might bear a striking resemblance, he still manages to infuse each with a unique touch. It's like he's practicing the Akira Toriyama theory of brother universes, where every character feels like a long lost sibling in another IP. In case of Tetsuya Nomura's clothes design, he gets inspired by Japanese street fashion and magazines. Maybe this is somewhat of a love it or hate it thing, but I'm a bit in the middle. He has an eye for cool designs, however he goes seriously too far on repeating accessories to be honest. But in my opinion, Final Fantasy XIV are to show how it should be done in this regard. With more deliberate intent and yet another zipper. He actually introduced some of the more iconic enemies like Gilgamesh, the Tonberry and of course, the most epic final battle of Final Fantasy VI. In short, he's crazy good at it. Despite so, the fact remains, Nomura is known for his genius character designs. His obscure belt locations, his fetish for chains, and his overarching main story concepts. Especially Kingdom Hearts 3. Am I right? I'm Fancy Light Nova author GP Fuchs, and Nomura is a great inspiration to learn from. Much like many other kiddos from the 90s, I found myself drawing Cloud the most. In my eyes, Nomura's works hold a similar level of accessibility in art as Akira Toriyama. 